Coming up next on Jersey Matters, we continue to introduce you to the candidates for governor. Democrat Jim Johnson thinks he can pull off a big upset. Also, what's going to happen to Medicaid in New Jersey if Obamacare goes away? We'll try to figure it out. Those stories and a whole lot more because Jersey Matters. Welcome to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. As we continue our conversation with those who seek to be governor of New Jersey, let me introduce you to Jim Johnson. He is only one of two New Jersey Democrats to qualify for matching funds in the June gubernatorial primary. Assemblyman John Wisniewski is the other, and Phil Murphy is spending his own money to run. Jim Johnson, who is seeking the Democratic nominee, joins us now for a look at the crowded Democratic field. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. As I do with every candidate that comes in, I ask them to just to spend a minute or so uh, talking about yourself, why you should be governor. Sure. I, am, uh, I was born and raised in New Jersey. My family's been here for now five generations, if you count my kids. I love the state. And over the course of my career as a federal prosecutor, as an undersecretary of the Treasury in the Clinton administration, as a private lawyer who took on civil rights cases, I've been prepared to take on the task of being governor of the state. We have big problems that we've got to resolve. Um, and through my range of experiences, I'm prepared and I have the passion to take them on in the right way. And you're up against some people who have a wealth of experience in, in Trenton. You are also up against someone that has a, a wealth, just a wealth of money. Where do you fit in on that? Well, what I have is a wealth of experience as um, a government executive, uh, which is different from being a legislature, legislator. And as we've seen uh, with the current administration in Washington, um, the skills of business and the skills of actually being a government, government executive are very, very different. So I oversaw the Secret Service, the Customs Service, the ATF. Um, the budget that I was responsible for was about $4.6 billion and 29,000 people. Um, in many respects, it's, it's great preparation for the task of being governor. I've seen two public opinion polls, and you correct me if there's another one out there, but I've seen the two. Fairly Dickinson, which you, you did pr fairly well for Fairly Dickinson. You came in at 4%, and that was with Wisniewski and, and Lesniak. Um, the Quinnipiac poll, it seemed like Phil Murphy was starting to pull ahead, far ahead I in the race. I saw your first ad, and your first ad seemed to introduce yourself and talk about property taxes, which is a big issue, which we'll get into. But you, you didn't go after Phil Murphy. Eventually, I would think for a Democrat to win, they are, are going to have to take him on. Are you ready to attack Phil Murphy? I don't think it's a question of being attacking any particular candidate. The first thing we have to do is actually uh, articulate to spell out a vision for what this state could be and should be. Um, and that's going to be a significant part of the campaign. There's a distinction between uh, me and many of the other candidates in a variety of areas. With, in connection with, uh, with Phil Murphy, um, just about 10 days ago, I brought an ELEC, um, a request for an ELEC investigation uh, in connection with some of his um, pre-announcement campaign activities. And, and explain that. Uh, well, under the law in New Jersey, once you start to truly prepare to become a candidate, you actually have to file a disclosure form. Um, you actually have to start to report where you're spending your money. Um, and I've taken the position, based on looking at the evidence and understanding of the law, uh, that those rules weren't complied with. And it's not just a technical violation, because um, I believe that ad. Um, Phil Murphy actually complied with these laws. There are at least $730,000 um, in campaign expenditures or expenditures he's already made that the public should know about. Um, and I think the important thing, as a longtime proponent of campaign finance reform, is that we are very clear about where money is coming from and where money is going. That is the way to restore trust in our democracy. It's funny because I started the question with, are you ready to take on Phil Murphy? And you seem to be accusing him of, of A, cheating, and B, trying to buy the election. What I am standing for is the principle that, you know, we first, I, I did say, and I've been very clear, that all of us should play by the rules. And I don't think in this regard he was playing by the rules. And secondly, is that th the way money goes into, into 
politics. Um, it shuts people out. Um, it's not just a question of whether or not one is purchasing influence. What is really important is that the voices of the people end up not getting heard. Um, and in the discussion and the back and forth about is this an accusation about money in politics, the people again get lost. Uh, and I've been running a campaign in which I'm trying to get people who have checked out of the system to check back in. And the way to do that is to make sure that the rules are clear, that we're playing by the rules, and their voices are actually going to be listened to. ELEC, by the way, just for those who may not know what it stands for, ELEC is the state's top law enforcement agency when it comes to elections. And, that's, and, and they're the ones that are supposed to make sure that everybody's following the rules. Uh, let's get on to some of the issues. Uh, you, you've taken property tax as your key issue, and, and I would say, and arguably, it's the number one issue when it comes to the voters in the state. You've come up with a five-point plan on how to deal with this. Could you explain that? There, there are multiple elements to the plan, and property taxes are important for two different reasons. Um, one, they are too high, and across the state, we actually pay too much for too little in return. But two, if you look at the state, and in my opening statement, um, my opening ad, I talked about foreclosure. New Jersey is at the highest level of foreclosure in the nation. Uh, so that after the recession, when many states were suffering from a collective national crisis of in foreclosure, it made sense for New Jersey to be part of that. But now, many years later, we're still in a point of crisis. We're at the worst level, and others have moved on. Part of the reasons that, that has happened is because in many communities, our property taxes keep going up. And so middle class families, working families are caught in a vise. Um, and that is part of the focus. Um, absolutely across the board, we need to be looking at property taxes. But a critical concern is around the foreclosure crisis that's been in the nation. So among the things that I've, I've looked at and will continue to look at is um, figuring out different ways to get more money back from Washington. And when I was, uh, as we've worked through the campaign and we've looked at the, the returns from Washington in terms of just grants that the office of the governor is for, um, is, is um, responsible for, or the administration is responsible for, more than $1.3 billion um, has, that should have come back to the state hasn't come back to the state. That could relieve some pressure on the, on the state treasury. If, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but but uh, I've I've read a report recently that said New Jersey is last in the country when it comes to how much money they get back from the federal government based on how much money they give to the federal government. So <laughs> and we are we are definitely at the at the at, at the bottom, which is a, is a terrible thing. And one of the reasons for it is that um, when we've made applications for grants. Um, sometimes we haven't filled out the, we haven't completed what the federal government wanted us to get. But there's another thing that's, go that's going on. Can we save the another thing for the next segment? Sure, absolutely. We'll pick up on that with Jim Johnson, Democratic candidate for governor when Jersey Matters continues.